Hi, this is the part two of the video for entropy. So in part one, we just looked at the introduction of entropy as a new state function, hopefully very relevant in the description of the second law of thermodynamics. We are continuing the discussion here. Let me make some space for the new content that we'll be discussing. Now, I want us to be careful here as we are working with this new expression. So let me start out with a counterexample of when this doesn't work. So a good source of counterexample is something we looked at earlier, free expansion of a gas. It's a non-quasi-aesthetic, irreversible process, and it's a good source of counterexample because so much of the things we do relies on the assumption that what we are working with is quasi-static and reversible. So let me draw the PV diagram of this free expansion here. You start out at some state, some pressure and volume. After the partition is removed, the volume doubles. And as we discussed before, the temperature doesn't change. So that must mean pressure halves. So the state of the gas ends up as somewhere around here. All right, so that's the change that takes place. I'm not going to draw a path because this is a non quasi steady process and drawing a path on the PV diagram implies that there's a path to be drawn. Here, there's no path. You just start at A, some moment later, you're at B. Now, if you try to naively apply the change of entropy, is equal to Q over T, you will naively conclude that change of entropy is zero because there was no heat transfer. In fact, your textbook calls this an adiabatic process and I never liked that description. And I hope when you hear this description, I hope this sounds wrong to you because it should not feel like that somehow the state of this gas here occupying half the volume is same as the state of the gas here occupying double the volume. It should not feel like you have gone through a cycle and the total change of entropy was zero. So I hope your intuition tells you that something is so wrong here, that this is not correct. So if this isn't correct, what can we do? Well, we can use the fact that we think this entropy thing is a state function which means the actual path you take um, shouldn't make a difference. Now here there was no path to take, so let me just draw a path, which is not going to be the free expansion process that took place, but it's a path that I'm using purely for calculation. Let's say we have an isobaric expansion followed by isochoric cooling. Because these are both the steps I have taken in the earlier calculation in part one and I can just kind of look up the result, change the variables. Okay, let me do that. So the change of entropy in process one is equal to, looking over at the result, it's a three halves, nk natural log of, oh, I need to label the point. Let me call that c, tc over ta, plus there is a change of entropy associated with the change in volume, nk natural log of volume at C over volume at A. All right, change in entropy in process two is there's no change in volume, just change in temperature. Three halves and K, the final temperature over the initial temperature. So now let's write down the correct change of entropy. If you look at it carefully, the first two terms actually cancel out. If you factor out 3 halves and k, add these together, then Tb is actually equal to Ta. So the second thing is just a minus of the first thing, so they cancel out. And you are left with the third term, nk, the term that's associated with the change in volume. And volume at C is same as volume at B, so let me write that. Vb over VA, or in this case, natural log of 2. So yes, there is change in entropy. So I like that result better. That's probably correct. 
So this is what this comes down to. The expression that we guessed at earlier, apparently it's not universally applicable. Instead, we have to be careful that it's describing reversible processes, or at least the quasi-static processes. You need to have an actual path to integrate over. When you have a big jump, like what free expansion describes, neither this infinitesimal expression or this finite expression applies for those big jump processes. Instead, what you have to do is come up with a quasi-static path like we did and just to calculate the difference for the end point using a reversible path. Okay, so this is a bit of a counterexample. I wanted to lead with this because this is a very common mistake that many students in thermodynamics make.